Okay, my presentation is about this project. In this project, we want to help uh, managers of digital, digitizing collection to handle the inclusion of, uh, you know, traditional people or objects or col of, uh, cultural uh, elements that are excluded to, in the collections. We are a small group of researchers, mostly Isabel and I are leading the project. Jonathan Giron is helping us as editor. And we have a PDA student and undergraduate student working with us the last year and a, and a half. Um, our main concern is that the Dyset project in Mexico continue to reflect biases and stereotypes from the original archive and, of course, those produced by the using of technology that was not created to handle variation in culture or language. So, or my intention, as I say, is helping these, managers, these project managers to create a strategy to confront these issues, at least with consciousness. These are our starting points. We assume that the digitation projects, massive or small, are not neutral. There is a lot to do to confront the new, this new political paradigm in order to point, uh, address the absence in our digital collections. If we want to change how and who is represented in, in the digital collections, we need to take a critical look at this collection and ask questions about how and they are working how conscious they are of these questions, and which factor are in limiting the possibility to introduce new criteria in the digital archive. The way we decided to work was first to identify the universe of digitized collections in Mexico and create a catalog. Then we select four case of studies and have a workshop with the people in charge of some of the digital collection and in charge of our four case of study. As a result of this dialogue, we will proceed to outline an initial guideline for inclusivity and access to data for digitalization projects. The Fritz approach to this is what I am presenting now to you. Finally, we will implement some of these criteria in the Biblioteca Digital del Pensamiento No Hispano that is also part of this project. This is our catalog. We collect 125 digital collections that have digitized cultural heritage items. They belong to a Mexican institution and for us, it was very important that they gave access to the dice items. The collection, the catalog, is not exhaustive, of course, but we are sure that it's a good representation of the state of the art of cultural heritage digital collection in Mexico. The catalog, catalog is now finished, but is not on the air right now, but we are working on that. From this universe of digital collection, we chose four case studies um, that we think represent very well the kind of collection that we have in the catalog. We include a, a large digitalization project, the digital collection for the National Library of Mexico, and a very small one, the archive of the memory that collects a family's archives in Coahuila, that is a state in Mexico. We have also a collection of work that, that work with video and audio, the National Repository of Oral Materials, and the Archive of Women that also work with images, text, and other materials. In last November, we had a workshop with managers of the digital collection, including those in the case of studies. The aim was to converse and reflect on the formation of digital collection, focuses on the biases of existing physical collection from the selection and digitalization to the accessibility of data and how they were approaching it. 
after the workshop, we deeply interview the managers of the collections in our case of studies, asking about the background of the history of the project, the way they work, the process of digitalization, metadata and, and format usage, and of course, we ask how they address if they do inclusivity. After the workshop, we realized that many of the issues of our concern had been experienced by, by the managers, but they didn't document the problems. As we expected, it's not easy for them to do all they want all they wanted because of the demands of the everyday work. They are the usual challenge of money and time. And we notice that's relevant that they don't not have much knowledge regarding digital objects as data. For instance, they do not have answers to questions on accessibility to the data or to linking data. So that was a main issue for us. After all this work, we have these preliminary results. Uh, we outline these following ideas that are in part things that the managers thought that they need to know or be conscious of and some practical issues. So, of course, that digitizing is a codifying culture is, it was a main uh, theme for them. And of course, the questions of inclusions, absence, and exclusions that are part of the world, and the, they need to realize that these issues are there. Of course, they think that digitization is a non neutral and including political and, and cultural biases. And this is uh, it's interesting because in the large project, they have clearly this problem, but this small project, they, they don't have uh, a precise idea of this kind of biases because they are constructing the archive and they are the political and cultural bias of the own collections. So we think that social responsibility, if we is assume, could be a balance to the bias or at least a way to acknowledge that there is a bias in every digital collection. In the case specifically of a uh, family archive, they assume that the archive is incomplete and they work from that starting point. And of course, as always in digital humanity, we think it's important to make a documentation, not just as a des description of the work, but as a communication act of the future. Because it's important to legate these ideas and criteria. In the context of the descriptors, uh, they make special um, emphasis in uh, the way we, are, we access the digital object is cataloging, classification, and descriptions. And many of the projects that come from uh, archives physical archives import errors and inconsistencies from this original cataloging. So they need um, to find methods for correction of the errors or the inconsistency they found, they find in the catalogs. Of course, there are all, all the way tension between the need of cataloging and the star, star, standardization and we think we need to remain flexible. Of course, as the projects are non-neutral, also the cataloging is not neutral, and less when you are using translating terms or translate, uh, translate the standards into another language. In the case of the technology and software, it's, it's an issue to use systems uh, developed in a different cultural environment because we know and the managers know that did lead usually to a loss of cultural important information. And this is the case of OCR because uh, the accents are a, a weird character that the OCR not all the time understand and sometimes we need to clean the OCR, the OCR to make the system work better. 
The collection, the colonizing software and platform is complex and is not the main issue to the digital collection. So it's important to choose the software taking in consideration the needs that we need to address, nationalities, communities, capabilities, gender, language. And it's important too that the people involved in technology, in the technology department, understand and share the, the, the concern about in, uh, inclusivity because they are who, at, 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 as, at the end, we choose the software and put to work it. In some of the archives, mostly uh, the oral archives and the women archives, we found that uh, we can represent in the subject and make participate the subject in, the, in their own representation. That mostly, for instance, indigenous people, or women, of course, that can work with the, uh, how we represent them. But again, the problem of the system that standardizes and the language and, and the ontologies give it at the end that mostly the subject must accommodate to the system rather the other way around. So this is a question that, that we need to address all the time. And finally, at about data, we, we think that managers need to know that access data is not just the digital object, okay? because many of times they think if you can access, for instance, the PDF or the image is as you are accessing the data, but they need to realize that that is not. That data need to be able to be manipulated, but one of the main problems right now in Mexico that we have a lot of legal voids in terms of digital heritage cultural collection, especially with data, because the regulations are not considering the data as a part of the digital cultural collection. So we need to be very careful how we manage that. And that's it. We need to finish the project. We need to continue analyzing the interviews write the guidelines, feedback from the workshop participant, and finally, public the guidelines. So thank you very much. <laughs>